So you bought a camera, sick. Cameras rule, I love cameras, they're so much fun. And you're taking photos, you're starting to get better, maybe you're making videos that you're starting to feel like, hey, you know what? These are actually pretty good. I wonder how can I make some money using this camera? Here's the deal. What's up, my name is Chris Tejas. I'm a photographer and videographer based in Ontario, Canada. I mainly shoot portraits, events, weddings. If there's a person, I'm gonna photo. Today I wanna talk about three realistic ways to actually make some money with your camera. This isn't like stock footage talk. This isn't about like selling prints or presets or anything like this. This is about you with your camera going out and making money. There's sort of three steps or pathways that I think make sense that have worked well for me and others I know. So we're gonna go over those three things as well as a bonus tip at the end. Really quickly, I just wanna tell you my journey with photography because I think that helps to frame why I did things the way I did. I started taking photos a long time ago. I got my first camera when I was 14 back in 2004. It was a Minolta X370. I bought it off eBay. I was so excited. I loved that camera. In high school, I basically lived in the dark room and the Comtech room where I made videos and that was my life. That's all I wanted to do. I decided to go to university for photography in 2008 and I didn't even go. I got my money back and decided to go work at a coffee shop. And actually most of the photographers I know kind of did the same thing even though they stayed in school. So I just kept the tuition fee, I guess. I wound up getting pretty deep end into the coffee world, owning cafes, working for roasteries, doing that whole thing. And the camera kind of fell to the side, but during the sort of early days of COVID, I picked it back up and I started taking photos again. And I realized as my businesses kind of closed down that, man, I just, I need to do what makes me happy. And this, thing makes me so happy. Making videos, taking photos, it just it makes me happy. So that's what I'm gonna do. So somewhere around one and a half to two years ago, I started taking things more seriously and I started charging for my work. I'm now working full time as a photographer and videographer, mostly. I, I work one day a week at a running store because I'm also obsessed with running. So outside of you know some walking around money from the running store, my camera pays for my life. And I wanna talk to you about what I would do if I were to start again right now and the approach I would take. First thing I would do is start with low pressure and low barrier to entry gigs. To me, these are events, social media, and real estate. These are turn and burn gigs. The images aren't around forever. They don't require you to have like a super strong portfolio and they're always in demand. The major cons with these kind of events are that the turnaround time is super, super quick. So you have to be very on the ball you're probably not gonna make very good money. Like you're gonna have to string together a ton of these to make decent money. And you're not really building a portfolio with this kind of work. But you also don't need a strong portfolio to get this work. So easiest way to get this work is just to start telling people you wanna do it. Tell people you wanna shoot events, offer to shoot events. You know, everyone knows a real estate agent. Tell them that you'll make them a reel for free and just see what they think. You know, almost all of them will have some kind of budget for marketing within what they're doing. And if you can provide something of really great value at a really great price, then I think you have a great opportunity to get in with people. And that's how I started. The key here is to make your rate super, super accessible, make it something that people can't say no to, and then over deliver. Don't work your fingers to the bone just to make 50 bucks, but like, if you still have a full-time job and you just want to start getting some gigs and getting paid through your camera, this is a great way to do it. Realistically, you're probably going to be in the $200 to $400 range for most of your gigs at this point. And I would say on the lower end of that is more realistic. The next logical step from here is to start really thinking about your portfolio a little bit more and start reaching out to different types of clients. For what I do at least, I would say that this falls under the category of working with things like small businesses, doing maybe some product shoots or some food shoots for restaurants, stuff like that. I would look at headshots and I would look at higher budget events. Turnaround time is still pretty quick on gigs like this, to be honest, but you will start to be able to charge a bit more and you're also gonna get access to the kinds of things that'll help your portfolio grow. Start with just asking a few people, you know, if they can sit for portraits, see if they're willing to just sit down and help you to build out your portfolio a bit so you know what kind of lighting you like, you know what you can realistically offer to people. You could reach out to local businesses that you might know. You know, you probably know someone who works at a local business or there might be somebody that you know that owns a local business and see if you can set up kind of like a styled shoot or an editorial there, something where you can just offer your services to build out your portfolio. You don't have to charge for this, but what you can do is then start asking them for some referrals because business owners know other business owners. Offer something that you can do and make sure that you can do it well 
uh, in the first place and then from there you can start to charge for it. As far as events go, just come up with a strong pitch and, and start to push it to anyone you can. I recently shot a event that was down in Chicago and the event had a whole, like it was a big conference. They had a whole bunch of different people there. I ended up shooting for three different brands. So even though no brand was paying me more than like a thousand bucks, I was able to make a lot more money on that event than I would have if I hadn't reached out to multiple different people. And honestly, shooting for multiple brands at an event is not that hard because there's only so much content you can gather at any one point for any one brand. So you can bounce around to different booths or to different areas of the event and you can actually capture a lot. You just have to be very on the ball and very ready to turn those images around quickly. You're probably going to be in like the $500 to $1,000 range when it comes to events like this or to shooting for businesses like this, that sort of thing. And I would say like headshots might be slightly lower than that, like maybe that three to $500 range, but you probably could push up a little bit if you offer something really robust. I would say realistically, the bulk of my work still is in this level, in this sort of like $500 to $1,000 per gig range. If you stack enough of these on top of each other, you can make a good living and it can be really comfortable. It does take a lot of work though, and you're going to be constantly trying to hustle and, and find new clients and that you should build that into what you do. Always make sure that you have a portion of time each week to try and get new clients and try and reach out to new people. And that's something that I was very bad at at first and I'm just trying to get better at. Number three is to just shoot your shot and go for the big fish. This could be like weddings, this could be luxury events, this could be doing commercial shoots for larger brands. You don't get these jobs by accident, at least usually. Like usually you have to be the kind of person they wanna work with, you have to have the portfolio they wanna work with, and you have to carry yourself in a way that makes them think, hey, this is the person we need on our shoot. So the first thing you gotta do here is build your portfolio and that's tough, that's not an easy thing to do. Best thing you can do is to offer to second shoot or third shoot or assist or hold sandbags or literally do anything to work with people that are where you wanna be. Offer your services and what you can do and try and be as helpful as possible and that is going to get you onto these sets or into these events so that you might be able to bring a camera with you and snap a few photos or next time they might bring you on to actually second shoot for them. These gigs don't necessarily have a price ceiling, but I would say like what we're talking about here is events where you're gonna be making over $1,500, $2,000 per gig. This makes up a small percentage of the total amount of gigs that I do every year, but a high percentage of the sales that I do in a year. I'm gonna reiterate something really important here. You have to get comfortable networking. You have to get comfortable getting to know people, putting yourself out there, pitching yourself, selling yourself. It doesn't have to be, you know, like gross and weird. Networking doesn't have to be a four letter word here, but you do just, you have to get comfortable trying to get work. Otherwise you're never gonna get it. So just get over the ick and do it. So that's the strategy. It's, it's pretty straightforward. Start small, build up from there and, you know, put in a lot of work and get a little bit of luck and there you have it. But there is one extra thing. Remember I said I had an extra tip for you here and this is it offer to shoot BTS. Anyone who knows me <laughs> or has like watched this channel knows how often I talk about this. Like the best thing you can do to get in front of like great creators or to work with great people is to offer to shoot BTS. BTS is something everyone needs. All you have to do is bring a camera and a mic and you are going to be their best friend because they need stuff to promote what they do. They need stuff for social media content and you can be that answer for them. If you are a kind and helpful person along the way, that's so great. You can be the kind of person who's like taking, you know, taking B-roll shots for them, taking BTS shots, moving sandbags, helping things out, asking if they need anything. And all of a sudden you're the kind of person that they could see themselves working with and paying. It's such a great system. It's how I've made so many so many of my connections and I cannot stress it enough. If you wanna know more about that, I do have a video that I'll link here and you can watch all about like BTS for YouTubers. It's a video that absolutely tanked when I put it out, but I promise you it is filled with great information. Okay, so there you have it. Those are the steps I would take to start making money with your camera realistically. In fact, that's literally how I did it. That's literally what I've done the past two years. So hope that helps. Thanks so much, appreciate you watching. Take care, make photos, peace. Thank you.